Do you struggle with swim anxiety in the swim portion of a triathlon? Guess what? You're not alone. Stay right here as we dive into the world of swim anxiety during the race, learn some practical tips, tricks, and techniques to conquer that fear and get you to the end of the swim with confidence. One of the things that can help you with your swim anxiety and cutoff times is a good swim stroke. Swimming isn't about how strong you are. It's not about how fast you can kick. It's not about how fast you can make your arms go. It's about proper swim technique. I'm gonna go over my swim technique. First, we wanna make sure that we reach all the way forward and you're going to extend. And you're gonna push your arm, push your arm up forward. You're gonna feel your scapula pull forward on your back. This is the big bone right here on your shoulder. You're gonna feel it pull forward. And that's going to engage your lats and your pecs. What that does is it engages two large muscles to pull your arm back through the water. If you don't engage the pecs, your bicep, a very small muscle, will be the only muscle pulling your arm through the water. This is why even with good swim arm position, some people don't go fast is because they don't engage the pecs and the lat. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to get your arm out there. When you're coming through your recovery, you're going to bring your arm forward and you're not. The old school was to put your hand in the water right in front of your head and glide it forward. We don't glide. You're going to put your arm forward. You're going to feel your arms come up. And as you extend out, you're going to have your wrist bent and your fingertips will tip, tip the water. When the fingertips are in the water, you push them in and you immediately start your pull. You're not going to glide. You're not going to leave it out there. If you leave it out there and glide, you're slowing down. Then when you're coming through the water, as you put your fingers in, you're going to make a giant question mark with making your arm into three paddles. Your upper arm is one paddle, forearm is another paddle, and your hand is a third paddle. You're going to want your arm in this position as it goes through the water. You do not want your arm in this position. You want to pull your stroke all the way down until your thumb hits your thigh at the farthest back point before you pull it out and start your next stroke. That's the fundamentals of a good, solid stroke. If you want more information on that, I do video swim coaching. JSCoachingSystems.com is my company. I can help you with all different types of coaching. When it comes to open water swimming and rough water and swim technique, you're going to take and shorten your stroke and pick up your cadence so that you can get that hand into the water and get that water moving forward. And you want to pick up your rotation just a little bit. This way you can beat that rolling rough water. If you're getting value from this, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe for a, a whole lot of great information. Now we're going to talk about actually the swim tactics. This is another area where people have a lot of problems with the swim is at the start. You know, you, you get on the beach uh, or you get on the dock, whichever one you're doing, and here are all these people between hundreds and hundreds of people to thousands and thousands of people all going to be getting into water and you look around and you say holy cow i am going to be in a washing machine with people beating me like um in the wwe but that doesn't have to happen there's a couple of different styles of swim starts and the first one is a mass swim start all the athletes in the water at one time and fired a cannon and everybody went. Well, the problem with that one is you were putting 2,500 people in the water and of those 2,500, 1,500 of them swam at the exact same pace. So you had this giant scrum of swimmers beating on each other. This is where the next style came in and that's called a wave start. And what a wave start is, is where you're gonna start with, uh, if it's a smaller triathlon, we've, I've done some where it's just all the men go and then all the women go. And then even bigger triathlons than that will have all of the age groups. So that when you start, you may be starting two minutes behind the 25 to 29 year old women. You're going to be the 30 to 34 year old men. You'll be starting behind them two minutes behind. And what happens there is it just spread the scrum out. That, to be honest with you, is my personal favorite type of start is the, uh, is the wave start. And then what's come into vogue here in the last uh, five, eight years is the self-seated start. You are literally swimming with the people who are the exact same pace as you. You're gonna be with those people the whole time. And if you're not positioned right, you can get into that little scrum uh, situation. Or if you have a situation where you swim straight and you take a first left-hand turn, and then you have to make a right-hand turn, 
that bunches everybody up into into a swim scrum could be an issue we're going to learn how to avoid that totally and completely and then there's two different starting points you have a beach start and you have a dock start. Most of the time with a dock start, you're gonna find that those are going to be self-seated start. Those are the only way you can really do a dock start. Here's how we're gonna beat the swim anxiety at the swim start. First, if there's any way, shape or form that you can get a swim warm up in, do it. Get to the venue. You wanna be one of the first people parking your car in the venue. So what you wanna do is you want to time yourself so you're gonna be one of the first people into transition area. You're gonna set up your transition nice and easy and slow. You're gonna have everything set up and ready to go. You're gonna put on your wetsuit. You're gonna head down to swim start and you're gonna get in a good warm up. You're going to get the water into your, your wetsuit. That's going to take that initial shock will be gone. You're going to know how the wetsuit feels when you swim. If you can't get a warm up swim in, I want you to get your wetsuit on and about 10 minutes before the start of the race, I want you to take a as cold as you can get bottle of water. And I want you to take and pull your wetsuit out and I want you to pour your bottle of water down inside your wetsuit, front and back, cold water, let it seep down in there. It's gonna feel horrible. But what's gonna happen is it's gonna do that heart rate spike is gonna happen then, 10 minutes before the race. And as the water's inside the wetsuit, your body is going to warm that water up. It's going to allow your heart rate to come back down. And when you jump in the cold water, you're not gonna get that initial shock because you already have the warm water in place and off you go. A lot less swim anxiety. We're going to talk about how to start the swim and not end up in that scrum. And what you want to do as you're heading out onto one of these starts is you want to look at where the buoys are, okay, and where you're going to line up in the line for entering the water. What you don't want to do is you don't want to end up this green guy on the inside, the inside cap. You want to work yourself to the outside if your buoy is, is going to say it's a right-hand turn, if your first buoy, you're going to work your way all the way to the left, to the outside. If it's a beach start or wave start, you're going to work yourself as far to the left as you possibly can go. Yes, I understand. It's a little bit longer to swim, but I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to swim it faster. You're not going to have someone setting your pace for you, and you're going to actually pass these other people as they're fighting in the scrum on the inside because what's going to happen is let's just say they're going to go four wide off the beach or uh, off a dock as you go four wide you're going to jump in the water or you're going to run into the water and you're going to see that the that these people along with the four in front of them the four in front of them, the four in front of them are going to funnel <clears throat> down into the first turn you're going to have a scrum of people at that first turn there's no doubt about it no matter how far that first turn is away there's going to be people pushing shoving trying to get around that buoy we're going to jump in the water and we're going to set our pace slightly lower than what you're wanting to swim the race at why do i say that because even if you feel like you're going to swim slightly slower the adrenaline's going to be high your heart rate's going to be coming up your body's going to want to go and you're probably even though you feel like you're going to be swimming at a slower pace you're going to actually be swimming at a higher pace than what you're going to end up swimming for the rest of the race and you're going to make sure you stay to the outside of all the swimmers and what i'm going to do is i'm going to spot something in the distance when you're on the dock or on the beach and you look down at that first buoy something out in the distance there may be a boat out there but find something that's a little bit bigger in the distance a tree a house something that you're going to spot instead of trying to spot that buoy because what's going to happen is there's going to be splashing there's going to be arms going everywhere and you're not going to be able to see that buoy real well but you might be able to see that palm tree or that giant oak tree or that tower that you can spot you make a straight line to the buoy you're going to swim that first buoy you're going to swing it a little bit to the outside you're not going to get right in tight on the buoy because that's where that swim scrum is going to be and it's going to get really tight right up against that buoy so what you're going to do is on that first buoy you're going to try to swim a little bit to the outside of the buoy so that's how we're going to get around the outside end this is going to help you number one in your anxiety you're not going to be in the scrum Number two, it's going to help you beat that cutoff time because you're going to be going faster out here than they're going to be going in here. Now, again, when you make that corner, find something big, a house, a tree, something in the distance to spot off of, uh, spot that to the next buoy, 
Now, by the time you get to the next buoy, you might have a situation where everything is narrowed down. You can cut it in a little bit tighter and then you're going to pick the finish line as a spot. Uh, that's a good way to get in there and find your way in and not have the anxiety and it help you to beat the swim cutoff. I want to talk to you guys about a rescue stroke. And what I mean by a rescue stroke, you need to be able to stop and rest. You're going to have some kayakers. You're going to have some jet skis. You're going to have some boats. You are allowed to go over to those and you are allowed to hang off of them and rest. You're not allowed to make significant forward motion. Take a, a second, get a little rest and move on. You might go from paddleboard to paddleboard to paddleboard, but you're going to make it and you're gonna keep on pushing forward all the time. Just think, always have a little bit of forward motion. As long as you have forward motion going, you're in the race. As far as the rescue stroke goes, my rescue stroke is breaststroke, and I've had to use it before. I'm a strong swimmer, and I suggest the breaststroke as a rescue stroke, not the backstroke. People wanna roll over on their back, and then they just have no idea where they're going. They're doing this backstroke thing, and they're turned sideways, they're going across the course, they're getting in other swimmers' ways. This is when you end up getting punched in the stomach, you're in the side or getting your goggles knocked off. What you want to do is you want to practice it though. The breast stroke or the side stroke are the two that I would suggest you would do for a rescue stroke. Go in the pool, swim a hundred breast stroke, knowing that, hey, I'm getting a better breath. When your head comes up, you'll get a good solid breath. You'll be able to sight, you'll see what's going on around you. Make sure you have a rescue stroke and you're very, very comfortable with it. Guess what? When that swim anxiety comes in, you go to that rescue stroke, all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. This is getting easy. And when you feel comfortable again and you look around your surroundings or where you feel comfortable, you can go back into your front crawl and move on forward. You may have to switch to the breaststroke and back and forth. That's all right. Nobody says you can't do that. So the next thing we're gonna look at is being ready to swim. Being ready to swim means being warmed up. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take a look at this video right here on swim warm up. This is Coach John. Boom. I'm out.